Good morning and welcome to the GTU's second webinar about the MA program. We're so glad that you're able to join us today or if you're watching this after the fact, we're so glad that you're able to make the time to get to know our program a little bit more, the diverse kinds of programs you can study here, all of the different concentrations. We've got three current students today who are going to be presenting a little bit about their own research. But before we do that, I want to introduce myself. If you're in the admissions pipeline at all already, you will have already gotten emails from me, but here I am to put a face to a name. My name is Kelly Caldwell. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the Graduate Theological Union, and I also am a current student in the doctoral program. So you can ask me questions about admissions or about my student experience. I'm really happy to be sharing a little bit today with you about our programs in the hopes that we can answer some questions and also get you excited about um, submitting an application to our program. You still have a week, a week and a half to finish that application for this cycle to start in the MA program in the fall. So the time is growing close, but you still have time and I hope that we're able to present to you a little bit of information today that will get you excited about moving forward with your application. We have three students today who will be telling you a little bit about their different programs. And we're going to start with my colleague in the doctoral program, Matthew Hartman, who's going to talk about his research, share a little bit of experience. Um, and then at the end of the program, after the three students, um, we'll come back, we'll circle around with questions. So if you have questions during the presentation today, um, please feel free to put them into the chat window that's there in the Zoom uh, conference call that you're in already so that we can collect those questions up and answer them all at the end. Uh, but you can put them in at any point during today's presentation. And if you're watching this after the fact, if you're watching or listening to our recording, I encourage you to send your questions to us by email instead. Since you won't be able to put them in the Zoom chat, please email us your questions at admissions at gtu.edu. That will get to me and I will answer them right away. So please do send your questions that way. All right, without further ado, let me hand the webinar off to my colleague, Matthew. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Matthew Hartman and I'm a second year doctoral student um, at, in ethics at the GTU um, where I work uh, at the intersection of religion, culture, environmental justice, and, and ethics. Um, so I want to share just briefly about why I came to the GTU, kind of, kind of how I went through that decision making process um, and, and, and how I found it a, uh, an inviting and exciting place uh, to study. Um, I also want to talk about uh, how the GTU is not only a place um, for, uh, to, to study theology. Um, so first, just briefly a little bit about myself. Um, my background is actually not in, it, it's not in the theology or theological studies. Um, so I got my bachelor's from a small liberal arts university in Missouri, which is where I grew up, um, where I studied philosophy and religion. Um, and then I got a master's um, in religious studies from, a, from Missouri State University, so it was a, a, a state school. Um, so, we're, so my training there is more on historical and cultural studies of religion, um, along with environmental ethics. Um, and so while I was familiar with religious studies, I didn't have any particular um, background or training in, in theology. Um, and so when I began looking for doctoral programs and, and looking at different ones um, across the country, um, I wasn't necessarily looking at theological schools. Um, religion was, was a part of what I wanted to research. Um, but I was not, uh, I wasn't drawn to the GTU uh, because I exclusively or even necessarily wanted a theological education. Um, so what drew me uh, to the GTU was its interdisciplinary focus. Um, um, so I found that here I could study religion and theology, but with the, with the wide breadth of faculty resources here through the member schools and affiliates and centers um, uh, and, and, and all the resources that those entail, I, I realized I could take courses in ethics, historical and cultural studies, philosophy and other disciplines um, to, to really supplement my research. Um, and then the cross-registration po possibilities um, with UC Berkeley were also a big draw for me um, as I readily have access to academic disciplines at the top public research university really in the world. Um, and so a little bit about my research here. So. Um, so I've focused primarily on how we think about um, ethics and religion in a time of climate crisis. So that's kind of where my research lies. 
Um, so questions like what, what does it mean to be ethical, to relate to one another, um, and our environments uh, faced with such monumental challenges for our collective future. Um, so how does religion play a role in, in thinking through this and responding to such a crisis? Um, so part of what I'm interested in, uh, in is deconstructing the conception of, of the human in history, um, often set over and apart from nature in, in this kind of um, nature of culture binary. And so, um, so these are, these are kind of some of the questions that I'm interested in and really how religion plays a part in and how we think about these questions. What, what role does religion have um, on top of, of the, the sort of scientific and political um, questions of responding to climate change, but how does, how does religion actually inform a moral imagination and creativity that allows us to respond and is part of that conversation. Um, and, and so I think this conversation is, is sort of inherently interdisciplinary, another, another connection to why I found the GTU um, such, a, such a helpful place to be. Um, so I guess my advice would, would be um, consider the GTU if you are looking to study religion, um, but also consider the GTU if you're looking to study religion or theology and something else, if, if there are other, uh, other areas. So um, whether it's religion in, in, in art or philosophy or sociology. Um, so if, and if you like me, find that you sometimes kind of have an identity crisis in terms of your academic interests. Um, do I really belong in, in a religious studies department or would it actually be sociology or ethics? Um, I found the GTU is a great place to work out those questions um, and, and really embrace your interdisciplinarity. So, thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Laura, and uh, like Matthew, I am a doctoral student uh, with the Historical and Cultural <laughs> Department of Religion here at the GTU. And I'm affiliated with the Center for Dharma Studies, where I study Hinduism and the goddess traditions of Northern India. Um, similar to my cohort, Matthew, I uh, didn't come into this thinking that I was going to get into theology. I have a master's in religious studies from the University of Hawaii with a sociological and anthropological focus. And I chose the GTU primarily because of my advisor, Rita Dasgupta Sharma, who is a specialist in the field that I'm interested in. And today, what I wanted to share with you is some of the interesting things that I've been able to do while here at the GTU. Um, while at the GTU, I benefit from working in an extremely religiously diverse and academic and social climate, um, which has enabled me to engage a lot of ethnographic research that might be a little bit more difficult as elsewhere. So for instance, most recently I was awarded the Center for Arts and Religious Travel Grant for my research about Western transformations in the meaning of Kali's iconography between the 18th and 21st centuries. In my study, I used Kali as an example of the power the religious icon um, can have to transcend materialism and its accompanying cross-cultural issues as she persists in the memories of her devotees. To illustrate the dynamics of her transformation and persistence in cross-cultural contexts, I examined her visual form alongside the context within which she is viewed. Between summer and winter of 2018, with the grant, I traveled to several Hindu temples in California, where I found people or pockets of Western Kali worshipers, most of whom were women. More specifically, I went to the Vedanta centers of Berkeley, Santa Barbara, and Hollywood, and the Sharanya Temple of San Francisco. To fill in some gaps between pre-colonial India and modern day West, I visited several archives at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and the Honolulu Museum of Art, both of which have lots of collections of colonial period images of Kali. So the images you see here are a sample of my research. The first set of immaterial images are found in medieval ritual texts, which describe how the goddess should be imagined by her devotees during, during ritual. Um, there are two classes of images that are found in some of these books. The more gruesome image, um, means that she's more esoteric and tantric, and the gentler, more benign image uh, is used in more popular religious festivals. So the second set of material images illustrates the transformation of this immaterial image found in some of these books. I found images of Kali Puja festivals during the colonial period recorded in popular watercolors from the 19th century. 
these images still adhere to the old image, but in the 21st century, many years following independence of India, you can see uh, a lot of transformations. And now Kali doesn't really look the way she used to uh, in her iconic form. And finally, in the West at the Vedanta centers of Santa Barbara and Hollywood, you can see a movement back toward this iconic image in the Pandal Murti, which are temporary statues constructed for yearly ceremonies. Not pictured, unfortunately, is the very traditional sandstone statue from Southern India that's used by the temple in San Francisco. These images are accompanied by first person accounts of individual experiences and interactions with the goddess. So today my research continues and I really look forward to broadening the scope of my investigation and other locations to include more secular representations of Kali and fine art. And I also aim to visit India, hopefully by the end of 2020 after successfully proposing my dissertation. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Myung. I'm in the third year um, student in the field of theology and science. I grew up in Germany where uh, I went to study engineering because I wanted to do something meaningful and um, to make the world a little better. I think that engineers are the most noble people on earth because they make the world more efficient, safer and cleaner. <laughs> However, when I worked as an engineer for three years, I realized that I was working more for the company than uh, reaching my goals and making a positive impact. I could see that my current trajectory would not lead me to where I wanted to be. And that was when, I, when my passion and my dedication for theology grew. In 2010, I had the chance to begin seminary starting in Korea. I served as a minister while doing my MDiv and my THM. It was very difficult, hard, but also very rewarding. I had the chance to uh, and the privilege to serve with wonderful people and to help people who are really in need. At the end of my program, I realized, oh, I have to study more. I should uh, continue my studies. And my dream was to continue my studies on a third continent and a third language. During my years in Korea, I realized that environmental issues are social challenges that impact all of us. For me, it's also a representation of all the injustice and inequality that's going on uh, caused by the rich and the powerful. The GTU offers the perfect opportunity to deepen my studies in the field of uh, religions and ecology. Since we can cross register at the University of California in Berkeley, I was able to take a course in environmental economics and another course in climate and energy policy. Both courses have been invaluable for my understanding and my research. The Center for Theology and Natural Sciences offer the perfect place to deepen my theological knowledge and to do research on environmental ethics. I believe that a threefold approach is necessary to face the climate change challenge that we have, and that is economy, ecology, and religion. I started with the history of the doctrine of creation in order to see how um, the, our understanding in a theological view has changed over the last 2000 years. I started with Irenaeus, Oregon, Augustine, then moved on to Francis of Assisi and Thomas Aquinas, continued with Luther and Calvin and ended with Bath and Tiart. Um, I think that our behavior depends on our belief system and society's relationship to nature can only be fully understood when we include our beliefs on creation. My second project was focused on determining the social cost of carbon, which is the long-term economic damage that one ton of carbon does to the environment. For this, I built an integrated assessment model, which consists of a climate change model and an economic damage model called the Dynamic Integrated Climate Economy, short DICE. Mm -hmm. It is based on the work of William Nordhaus, who received the Nobel Prize in Economy for this model in 2018. The social cost of carbon helps 
politicians and lawmakers to make certain decisions that will help to make our transition from fossil fuel based economy to a more sustainable market economy, while at the same time helping countries to make adaptations to climate change. My current project tries to include a Roman Catholic view on environment and society. For this, I will uh, examine Pope Francis Laudato Si and the church's role in that. I hope that I could give you a little view on what I'm doing and what you might be doing as well. <laughs> thanks, Myung, and thanks also to Laura and Matthew for presenting a little bit about what they're passionate about, what all of you are working on. Um, it has been a pleasure to hear a little bit more about what all of my colleagues here in the program are working on. We have a couple of minutes left for questions, so I'm going to invite our Director of Communications, Doug Davidson, to read out whatever questions there are, and we'll see which one of us should, uh, should take a stab at them. Well, Kelly, this first question might be best for you to answer. Mm -hmm. Someone writes in and says they've just learned about the GPU's MA program, and they've seen that the deadline is March 1st. Mm -hmm. Can they still apply, or what should they do if they're very interested in attending in the fall? Well, the short answer is yes, you absolutely can still apply. Our, our hope is that you can submit your application by March 1st. So you still have time to fill out your application, write your statement of purpose, gather that all together in our online application and submit it by March 1st. Please send me an email at admissions at gtu.edu so that we can work on making a timeline for getting the rest of your materials in for your application. But realistically, uh, transcripts can often come in quite fast. If you have GRE scores already or TOEFL scores, if you're not a native English speaker um, on file already, those can come to us quite quickly. If you have faculty members who've written recent uh, letters of recommendation, you can get those usually turned in pretty quickly as well. So it is not too late. Uh, be in touch with me um, by email so that we can make arrangements. We have another question. Uh, someone's interested in knowing about taking classes at UC Berkeley and how that's done. Matthew, you referenced that in your presentation. Maybe mm -hmm. others of you have also taken classes at UCB, but yeah, speak to us about how that's done. Yeah, I mean, it's a, so the cross-registration agreement allows you to take uh, courses um, through through Cal in both, both semesters. Um, I, I've taken a, um, a class for, this is my third class this semester. Um, and I found, um, I found it to be a great experience, I think. Um, all the the students that that I've worked with, there are students in my classes from multiple different departments, and so it's interesting to see just different things that people are studying. Um, I, I also find that like you know when questions of religion do come up, it's like uh, interesting to have. Uh, I feel like I can contribute to some of that di dialogue. Um, I've taken classes through um, the environmental policy, science and management department, and um, the anthropology department there, and so. Um, I find that there are always questions that are coming up that um, that uh, someone who who is trained in religious studies can have something to add to that dialogue, and so I found it to be I found it to be a really helpful uh, experience, and was one of the reasons why I said in my when I was talking earlier that I that I wanted to come to the GTU to have that resource. So. Okay. We've got another short question with maybe a. A longer answer. How do I choose a concentration if I'm not sure? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, there are a lot of different priorities that people might have in mind when they're choosing a concentration. Um, and so there some people come in with a really clear research project that's really specific. It's obvious which concentration, but especially at the MA level, a lot of people come in with a sort of broad interest. They're not quite sure how they want to narrow things down yet. And that's perfectly okay at the MA level. Um, there are several different ways that you might want to think about this. One is faculty related. You might look at the faculty members and see if there's somebody that you're really excited about their work that you might want to work with and you might see what concentrations they are able to supervise or advise for. Um, you might also think about what concentrations are offered by the center, institute, or member school that you want to affiliate with in the MA program. So if you're thinking, boy, I really want to affiliate with the Center for Dharma Studies, for example, there are a set of concentrations that are offered by the Center for Dharma Studies. This is all on the website, and if you're confused about it, just shoot me an email, 
admissions at gtu.edu and I will get you to the right place. But um, yeah, each of us kind of probably went through our own process of figuring out what concentration best fits our research interests. Um, and if you are confused between a couple or if you're just thinking, you know, I've got this project, I don't quite know how it lands, um, just get in touch with us. We're really happy to work with you on that kind of thing. So we're at the 20 minute mark, which is what we promised folks. We're so at our time. Words. It has been an absolute pleasure to spend this time this morning. I hope that this has been useful to you. I hope that you are able to take all of this information and make sense of it. And one more time, please get in touch if you have any questions or if you just want to let me know that you're sending an application and I'd be happy to get an email from you. Thanks so much for spending your time with us.